started. Uh, I'm Carl Zellmer with Emerson, and uh, we have a team pattern, and I did the calculations between our, our group. We have 139 years of industry experience, so uh, we have some total engineers here, too, so we have some questions on hopefully we can get through uh, everything. And, and, uh, I'm Carl Zellmer, I'm Vice President of Sales and Technical Support for Emerson Planet, the Air Commission Department. And let our panel introduce itself. I'm Tom Merle, I'm the Technical Mechanical Services at Dallas, Texas, received by the Great Ocean Park Safety Engineering, and been the heating air conditioning business for about 30 years. Tim Kropp, I'm the President of Crop Metcalf Air Mission Union, the Washington, D.C. market, primarily a residential contractor for service and replacement of the new infrastructure. I've been in the industry for about 20 years. What we're going to do today is just go through a, a number of the key industry trends, and I'll talk a little bit about the trends and you know, some ratification for you, and we'll get a page from the industry panel and I'll suspect them. And uh, what I hope this does is provide information, but also get you thinking about what these trends and new regulations are going to do and be prepared for them so you can be proactive and ready for them when they come through rather than reactive. DOE regional standards coming up. We have some things going on next year with furnaces. In 2015, we have some AC changes. What's going on with dry charge units? A big part of our industry at this point in time. A lot of dry charge units have been sold. We're talking about the growth of drug free systems. Test work has been going on there, and we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, some aftermarket support tools for their smartphones and so forth. It's one of my pet peeves as an industry. We are so far behind a lot of the other, uh, lot of the other industries in terms of use of smartphone apps and so forth. I'm going to give an example. Uh, when I was driving here from Ohio, I was at the stop for lunch, and I said, oh, I wouldn't mind some white castles. And I typed whitecastle.com in my phone, and the GPS figured out where my car was. And it gave me directions to the next three closest White Castles, and there's one in Maryville, uh, 17 or 3 miles away. They do that for a 50 cent hamburger. Why can't we do it with systems and components? So I just, we, we, should, we need to get into, into, into the curve, uh, curve mode. So anyway, so aftermarket, we're going to talk about how we're trying to help uh, support tools and apps and ease of sales. Regional standards. How many folks have preferred we have some regional standards and come at us? This is in general, but more important than typical. Uh, we also we did a survey, we, we put a survey out to about 500 contractors, got about 100 responses, and I'll share the survey results with you as well. As we do this. I think most folks understand that we have a, a, a company going to be divided into three quadrants. We have the south, the southwest, and the north. There's going to be some different standards for each one, and probably the one closest to us in the north is going to be 90% uh, uh, condensing purpose is going to be a smart. And that has, it could have an impact. Uh, we we're wondering if for those areas that uh, it's very difficult to get a 90 condensing purpose in. Or we have more heat pumps installed. Uh, so what does what some of the panel think about the 90 percent? Well, I can tell you that uh, I'm in actually in the south market, which uh, is 78 percent. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be fine. But having the, uh, the 90 percent, we hear you put a lot of burden on some people with a lot of extra expense uh, on having to vent these furnaces in near impossible situations. Uh, opening furnaces is going to be another big problem that we're going to have to face. The, uh, the jury is still out on whether or not they're going to allow a waiver. You know, it's, when it's personally impossible to put in, are they going to force you to, or are they going to force the homeowner to incur these extra costs to, to go through this venting uh, process with it? Um, for me, for me personally, in our market, we have a concern going on right now in the state of Maryland, where they know what the DOE regulations are. They they, they know what what's going to be and when it's coming out. But uh, this one particular county is taking it upon themselves to be a little bit more proactive. They just they want to be either a little bit more green or they want to be um, a little more proactive in on trying to get the highest efficiency equipment in their area. And they've already enacted 90% uh, furnaces as a requirement. And 
resources, which is, you know, it's not all that bad, but you know, as I said, the same problems that we've that, uh, with the bank problems are still coming up, and they are very subjective on this waiver. But they actually have a waiver form. And they give us some, some outs, so to speak, or if you have to come across the finished ceiling, or if you have to paint out the front of the house, those are some examples of some waivers. But it's actually very subjective to the actual inspector who goes out there and whether or not they'll allow that. And of course, you know, you, we're stuck in the middle as to what to do and what to offer the homeowner. The homeowner doesn't know what to do. Um, they want to live within the guidelines of what the county is requiring. They think that the county knows more than we know in many cases uh, as far as the regulations. Uh, it's just become a very, very confusing situation. Uh, not to mention, I don't know how they're going to enforce it. This is going to be on our own shoulders. I think, I think they're going to have to certify that you, that's what you did. Exactly. <coughs> yeah, there you go. You think that's going to force more repair on the furnaces? Heat changing, heat exchange, and other furnaces and so forth? I think it's going to be thought about and talked about a lot more. I agree. Yeah. The jurors will be out as to whether or not that will actually happen, but I guarantee you that discussion is going to happen more often uh, than, uh, than it has in the past. Uh, we're about room by room based for heaters, just like window shaders. The, uh, you know, one of the things that Steve was mentioning when, when we did the uh, 10 to 13 seer regulation took place, you know, the industry was growing and growing, and a big pop up with people were building up the final 10 seer and it dropped off. Uh, it was market it was, uh, one of the things that happened when 13 seer hit was there was a significant jump in window wear, you know, so people got hit with sticker shock when they saw the new button cost in 13. So the window unit, you know, window unit market took off. Here's the results of uh, when we, we got about 100 responses, and about a third of the folks said, of course, they're here now. Uh, some folks thought it was good for the industry, and back to back to your point, too much government intervention, and then, and then uh, not enforcement. Uh, I think it's going to be self enforceable, and then maybe some audits to make sure that they're providing right. Is that percentages you got there? What's that? Is that percentages? No, those are, we had about 100 responses. Those are the number of responses, <laughs> about a third to third. <laughs> Next question from the folks was, what have you done, what have you done to prepare for the upcoming standards? And the majority of the, the biggest response, we've done nothing. But don't forget that uh, May of 2013 is not very far away, so you're going to have to be thinking about uh, how, how you deal with 90% with, uh, furnaces. And then probably the biggest impact I've uh, talked to folks has been the impact of complexity of, of, uh, complexity of, of inventory that the distribution can have to carry. To, in many cases, it might be a clear, you might be living in the 13th Sierra area, but right over the bridge, if you're in North Tulsa, you would go over the bridge and you're, you're in 14th <coughs> So you, you may have to deal with those complexities and, and you serve time. Yes? Are these questions on other contractors? What's that? Were these questions yes. on other contractors? Where are the contractors in the upcoming How can the contractors in the I think you've uh, taken the time to understand the regulations and what particularly when they, they come out with uh, how the things are going to be enforced or validated. You have to get prepared with, you know, there are different forms you have to use, you have to get sign-offs, how are they enforced, and that hasn't been, a, that hasn't been decided yet. I think it's going to be self-enforcing, and then from what I understand, self-enforcing, you have to say, I certify, I comply with the standard in that area, and then they'll come out with some occasional audits. I think there is, there is a serious talk that they're going to uh, put this off for 18 months, Couple weeks ago. I'm glad you guys get the news and I'm sure you read that article, but there's a good chance that uh, the way the news uh, made it sound in the article, that there was about a 50-50 chance that the DOE was going to, uh, because of the distributors and the suppliers, that were going to have such a mess that they're going to uh, allow an 18-month uh, curtailment of this. And so I'm not sure that's going to happen, but we can't plan on that, that's for sure. Yeah, if you're, if you're a distributor up in the wrong part of the country, you have you have, you have too much of the wrong equipment. It's, it's, uh, you have a bunch of dead inventory, and I feel for those guys. Yeah. And uh, since I'm in Texas, we still have like new construction and new things <laughs> going on down there, and uh, projects that are starting. And prepare your customers for these type of changes. Uh, typically, most of the people are doing some kind of above grade program, and uh, so the 14 C or 8 percent is not as impactful as maybe for some. Our market in Dallas Fort Worth has a strong 16 year presence in Houston, Austin, San Antonio, too. Uh, but again, if you've got anybody preparing projects, you want to be sure that they know that this is coming and it doesn't uh, blindside. Next 
next I'm going to talk about dry chart units, R22 dry charts. Uh, how many of you in the room have put in on the R22 dry chart? Yeah, it looks like a, you know, it looks like a majority, not everybody, but a majority. Uh, last year there were about a million units of R22 dry charts manufactured, and we think there's probably about 800,000 installed. You know, that's in the high teens and percentage-wise of the total residential market, so it's not an uh, inconsequential number. Uh, we figured it's down a little bit this year. Uh, we're probably going to be around 800,000 pieces. We've seen it by quarter for our fiscal year, about 790 or 800. That's, that doesn't represent our numbers. That's estimate of, of the industry. But again, that represents 15 <coughs> of the residential market. The uh, you, you have a, a much longer difference here to stay, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the impact of the direct budget. Maybe the panel can make a couple comments about what, whether or not you've embraced it or well, we've embraced it to a certain extent. I allow my service technicians to do, uh, do acid checks and make sure the system's clean, and, and I allow them to do an exchange uh, condenser. Uh, our sales force, I don't think, has sold any. So I think we've sold about, uh, percentage wise, about 12 to 13 percent of our, of our condensers that are sold this year.
around for the next decade or so. Um, we, we are we are actively looking at other other options and, and blends with uh, one two three four YF, air refrigerant, and R32. Uh, we're very very active and in, in, in involved with the refrigerant manufacturers. And there's a, a, a different pros and cons, you know. And uh, propane is a propane is a great refrigerant that's got a little fall. I hate pumping the basement. But but we're looking at we're looking at a lot of different options, and uh, we're going to be the basement for the next decade or so. And so I'll, I'll be retired by the time that uh, we have to make that choice. Not that we try to buy it. We we spend a lot of money on it. We spend a lot of money on research, and we're going to be on the forefront this year. Call. Uh, one comment on our, on our street. Just I have another question. How about R22 availability? <coughs> Not the price, but available has R22. Seems, people I talk to seem to think you can get it. Okay. It's a little pricey, but you can get access to it. Yeah, we're 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 talking about that is the type of problem. One one comment at, at this point in time. Uh, uh, <coughs> only a, a cruise, uh, two, two R22 like refrigerants, R22 and R407C, which requires use of a uh, chain, chain to polyester oil. The use of uh, many of those other 400 series refrigerants, while well, they claim to be a, you can use it with uh, uh, mineral oil, we, we have not proven it from a durability standpoint, and it will impact your compressor warranty. Just so FYI, uh, if you might see an ad saying, oh, this is, this is okay, you can use it with mineral oil. We have concern on oil return, particularly on uh, using some of those 400 series of with mineral oil compressors. But if you particularly, on, if you have something with a long mindset, you need to be careful about to make it easy if you're going to use some of those other refrigerants. Uh, we asked the question what percentage of your systems were dry charge units this year? Uh, 0 to 10, that's kind of our panel up here. It's there in the 0 to 10 range. But if you look ahead, uh, 15 people that probably said half of their, uh, after their change outs, half of their installations were uh, dry charge. So, so that's not insignificant. It goes by region and you know, kind of age of equipment. And, you know, frankly, if I had an eight year old unit and I was option to change the compressor, change the condensing unit, I didn't want to be in the house for a while, I might change the dealer. I know you would have sold it, you know, I would not. Do you believe the dry shit is here to stay? Uh, you know, I, I think that. Uh, the EPA has responded to kind of a non-response, so I would control the availability of R22, and that will control the availability of R22 equipment. So I think as, as that gets cranked down, the availability gets cranked down, the price goes up at some point. There's a tipping point, as people say, it. uh, it's time to pull the plug out. So who's going to be the first smart manufacturer to come up with the equivalent of dry charge 80% percent furnace? <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to sell the compressor on every, every furnace. <laughs> Uh, we asked a question of the group, said so when you have a, an R22 compressor being changed, what percentages uh, do you have? A third said replace uh, compressor, 24% said replace the condensing unit with a dry charge, uh, 7% 410A, 36% mostly the panel up here said they're going to put an entire new R410A system in. And, and that is probably typical and uh, probably closer to what this room does because if you then generally bring the profit of the contract. Here are the reasons. I, I think everybody knows the reasons. Cost saving versus a new piece of equipment. The homeowner gets a new warranty quicker. You know, chop and drop on the job site, quicker installation. Probably make a little, a little more money rather than the compressor change that. So, um, these, are, these are the reasons, and I, I think it was pretty self explanatory. And then yeah, we asked the question what refrigerants are you using for the dry charge that you install? install? And this is Echoes pretty much the, the comments I heard on here. The vast majority are, are 22. If you don't mind paying the price, the price for it is it's really available. There was about a three, about a three or four week period when there was some uncertainty on the that quickly went away. Is that the case that most of the OEMs, uh, radio carrier, robotics, everybody is the Is that pretty much their stance as manufacturers that you shouldn't use any alternative stuff except the we, we are, for the most part, aligned in that. So, you know, you, we have stop actually working Yeah, we, we have decades of experience with R22, and we're all in it. 
comes back to the compressor and it's durable.
Aftermarket support tools. Uh, this got, I, I mentioned my, you know, being in the dark ages on, on some of the uh, uh, apps and the use of the internet and so forth. We're trying, we're trying our best. We're doing a lot of work in this arena to provide, uh, to help you provide tools and things to do to make your, our job uh, easier to do. We have a number of smartphone apps that are now available. Um, I'm just going to touch on a couple of them. One of which is a, a Copeland Cross Reference that you can uh, take a look. Can pull this app up. By the way, all of our apps are free. We don't care about making money on them. We'll make money on the press we buy. But things like a cross reference from Kian, uh, uh, the compressor model number that you're uh, that you're looking at, be it our be it ours or our competition, and cross you to what is the most uh, current and available uh, Copeland product that uh, you, can, you can use, and it has the capability to get even a link to where to buy section for the idea of what our distribution is. Another one is uh, called Emerson eSaver, and this is a, a pretty cool app that gives you the opportunity to take a look at the equipment that's currently in place. You can put in specs on that, put in what part of the country you're at. Uh, you, you can either uh, you can adjust what the uh, fuel rates are or pull what the average rates are for your area. And then we'll compare the heating and cooling loads and we'll tell you what the energy consumption is for the existing piece of equipment. And you can look at different options like going to 16, 20 sear and heat pumps. And this is, uh, this is uh, branded by agnostic. We don't, this is just kind of use industry rules of thumb. And, it's a very nice, very easy to do application, and you can you can then quite very quickly need to show a homeowner three or four different options that they can compare to how much energy you can consume with an existing system, and, uh, and how much you can do with two or three different options. And if you email them, go for it down the spot. But some of the apps too are pressure, temperature, like information. Uh, uh, let's see what else do we have? Check and charge gives you some uh, you know little pocket slide rules for super heat and charge. With, Give you an idea of how popular some of these are. These aren't, you know, these haven't gone viral because I maybe we're not that much of an interesting industry. But, uh, Fault Finder, which helps you with some diagnostic, uh, about 6,000 downloads in last year, 5,000 downloads on the e-saver, and about 10,000 downloads on the cross reference. How many, how many in the room do you have? Know, most of your technicians have smartphones. That's a pretty good number. And, uh, I, think, I think some, if you haven't, again, all these are free. If you haven't uh, taken the time to, to pull them up and give them to your techs, have them cross references, and particularly your sales force on some of the e saver uh, calculations, they're quick and easy to give an estimate of what the energy savings are and the energy costs that the homeowner might face. And there's a bunch of other, uh, rather than just showing Emerson, there's a bunch of others out there. Carrier, the carrier rooftops. Uh, uh, App, grounding belts, you got Dan Foss, and, and Pitzer apps as well. Linux, Linux has a mobile uh, center of a lot of different applications. So if you guys have smartphones, uh, take the time to load these apps on them and uh, you'll, you'll make their, their job of doing, doing business easier. And uh, it'll, it'll be like a little White Castle analogy that uh, uh, tell you one of these days you're going to be able to, to scan in a, a part number, it'll, it'll give you a cross reference, it'll tell you where to buy, it'll tell you where the nearest location is, give you directions. Tell you how many they have on the shelf. But we have, we have to get there and we're going to be a state of the art industry in the future. Any other apps that might be of interest? Panel? Yeah, Lennox has some nice apps, some nice apps. Uh, we're a carrier dealer, but I, I'm snooping around all the time. And, uh, they have some really nice uh, consumer uh, for salespeople to use for consumers. Carriers.
in other words, of the mobile apps that they use, which, which ones. So even though a lot of folks have smartphones, <coughs> the guys we pull, pressure temperature, heat saver, full fiber, which you know, helps, helps diagnose issues. There's a White Rogers a suite of apps across the country. But uh, the, the biggest response is we haven't used anything. So, I mean, I do, these apps are free, and I encourage you to uh, go online some, sometime and get uh, help your technician and help yourself. And, uh, and do it, you're doing a job correctly. Um, we, asked, we also know the question we asked the group. What, what, which of the following would help improve your ability to so? And uh, of course, I'm not surprised that lower prices <laughs> would be number one, uh, ease of installation. Better, better selling tools for technicians. Uh, I hear that a lot, particularly our council meetings, better selling tools for technicians. Uh, the, another pretty good one here is more affordable two stage equipment. And uh, we're thinking about it. In some parts of the country, it really does. A lot of this two stage stuff at 16, 18 series really justified that in the north. But the people want comfort. That's a that common thread. What do you guys think if we get four, uh, two stage or two stage and my way to put down the four stage That's your idea for the market. Where is that itself? Yeah, I heard 